All right, guys, so uh, fortunately enough, this this is a tube to eye beam. You, you record? Yeah. Fortunately enough, this is a tube to eye beam um, from WAC Customs out of Connecticut. Um, I've been using his axles for ever since I started doing drop axle stuff. Um, guy's quite the craftsman. This is a tube to eye beam. Um, so it's a dog. Uh, this is a two, two inch. I think it's two and a half inch uh, main beam, but it's sleeved with an I beam. So there's a, you can see the rosette welds in here. There's an I beam that goes through this whole center, okay? And then you see the uh, ballast bars that me and Maddie added um, when we were down at uh, Customs by Biggin uh, down in uh, North Carolina. That was just before, um, that was actually the, supposed to be the week before Crossville um, or a couple days before Crossville race. But, uh, Fortunately enough, all that stuff kept the structure of the axle the same. Um, I put a digital angle fighter on the kingpins here. Kingpins is what sets um, basically everything on the car, the location of the kingpin. And then um, I mounted the rack directly to the axle, so then we could have full suspension travel and the toe and stuff like that never changes. Um, I built it with an adjustable slip shaft on the steering so uh, that the axle can move up and down uh, without any binding or anything like that. And then the wishbone attaches down here, and this is our third shock bracket that I built. But right now, the uh, the uh, uh, four bar setup got, uh, got mangled. So now you see that these are offset, right? There was a two inch offset here, but on the chassis, there's a two inch offset as well. Um, and when I built this, put this up on the jig, um, I jigged up the axle so it was square off the motor plate and everything off it like that. Um, when you reference off the motor plate, everything else is going to be square. So when we originally built the car, this was jigged up square to the motor plate. And then I set up all the four bars, the, the four link system. Uh, I drilled or I welded a uh, three quarter inch bolt and a five eighths bolt at the center that we needed them. I think the front bars are like, I don't know, 26 inches long or something like that. So I built, uh, I welded two of them, let's say a 26 inch center. Then I adjusted all the ladder bar, or four bars so they all fit on there, okay? Then I went in here and put the, the four bar in here and then I scribed it on the uh, on the chassis. And I did the same on the back so there was an arch, okay? Now I set the angle at the first bar and made uh, a pin mark, okay? And I actually used, um, I think it was a 716 socket that fit in there perfectly. And uh, I used that to center up the punch since I don't have a centering punch. So I used a 716 socket with a regular punch just to take up the slot of the five, uh, the three quarter inch hole and uh, center punched it. And then I did the same and set the four lower bar at that same angle. I think at right height, I think it's, uh, it was like eight degrees or something like that, 10 degrees um, upward. So at full extension, it was at like, uh, I think it was 10 degrees negative or something like that, 10 or 12 degrees negative. So I did that for the whole front suspension setup. And then, uh, these bars went right now. Um, I'm chopping these off because they bent just above this gusset here, is where they tweaked. So I gotta cut off the gussets here, then I'll put the angle finder on there and figure out at what layback these are sitting right now. They're probably gonna be right around 85 degrees. So when I put the new brackets on, it'll be at 85 degrees. Now, when I was building this originally, um, I made these templates before I welded them on. Okay, so this is gonna be the template for the uh, for the outer outer brackets, they'll slide in here, and you can see they don't uh, they don't fit perfectly. But that's because the weld on uh, the angle that that's on it actually drops down like a half inch, moving over the distance of that. Uh, it's a three sixteenths uh, three sixteenths bracket plus probably like three sixteenths of weld. So um, when this drops in, you probably see it a little bit better here. When these come in. These brackets will fit just like this. So now, when I go to put this all back together, it's uh, gonna be simple as butter. The brackets should be here this afternoon, and then all I have to do is uh, basically transfer them, put these on there, and mark them out. These are all laser cut brackets. Um, if I had a mill, I'd just start on them myself and just plasma cut them and freaking arch them and stuff like that. But these holes, the location on these holes have to be is pretty pretty crucial. Like, and with doing it on the drill press and stuff like that um it's just not just not worth it 
So we overnighted the brackets. I think it was like $50 in shipping for like freaking $15 worth of material, but hey, whatever, so be it. Um, it's more of a safety thing than anything else. So when these get here, all I literally have to do is put these on there, trace it out with a Sharpie and make my Sharpie line disappear. I'll have to use the plasma cutter and so on and so forth. They start off, this is the inner brackets, but they start off just squared here. So I'll transfer this one on, arch it, knock it out. And uh, actually this one's labeled plus 3 16ths of an inch, eighth inch. So uh, I have to leave a little more material right there. Actually, yeah, probably do. So I labeled all those. So these will literally transfer them over and weld them on. So right now I gotta go through and uh, I start cutting them off with the porter band and I'll chop these off with the porter band and then I'll go through there with a the flap wheel and a grinder and clean them all up till we got the main beam of axle back. So it's uh, as much talking as that was, the work's gonna be probably five times longer than that, but it's not too bad. This is the type of work that's uh, simply just work. Um, it doesn't take too much knowledge to do it. Um, as far as this part, when I go to set it all up, that, that gets a little bit involved. But we use the digital angle finder and uh, I could reference zero at any point. So I could set it to zero and hit zero on it. And even if it's at 15 degrees, or whatever, that's my new zero. So then I can line up the two um, perfectly. Then I'll go through here and I'll scribe I'll use a cutoff wheel or something like that to put two little marks on the front side of the brackets here just to know that the uh, the position of them but you'll be able to see it too when you go to cut through something um, when you get to the little the last bit of uh, material the color changes at least on like a mild steel when you get through the last little bit of uh, get through until the metal's real real thin it'll start turning colors and then you know you're about to break through so I could leave just a little bit of material there. Um, something like, I don't know, not much, but probably something like, I don't know, 10, 20 thousandths or something like that. The material will start to color and you know you're about, you're about there. So I could just break it off and leave a little bit of remnants there so I can mark it, so I can put these brackets in the exact same location. So that's that. Now, I'm gonna get to work.